Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to go over something very important and that is how to present or how to share the results section of your paper, you know, of course writing it in a social science quantitative paper. So having said that, let's go ahead and see how we can do this. So we're going to talk about the overall structure of the entire paper, something we've done in the past. I'm going to talk about the ordering and I'm going to provide some sample write ups some examples, if you will. So overall structure. So this is the big moment that we've all been waiting for. Uh, your results section is right here and it is built off of everything you did before that. Often, of course, if you're a student, you have to do these first three chapters together as your research proposal. I'll call it RP for short, because this is what lays the foundation so that you can go and collect data and actually analyze it. So the introduction, you share your problem, you share your research questions, maybe your objectives, your purpose, your significance, all that is done right here. And then after that, you share what you read about the problem. And then in the methodology, you share how you're going to answer your questions. All this is done and this takes a long time. The introduction in particular is what really takes a long time when you're trying to figure out the scope, the delimitations and limitations of your paper as you're trying to figure out what you want to study and what kind of questions you want to ask. That takes a long time. The review of literature, if you're new to this, it can take a long time. But if you've been studying something over through several papers, this is actually the pretty easy part. It goes fast because you're just reporting and sharing what other people have done in relation to your problem. Now, of course, sometimes you want to synthesize and point out strengths and weaknesses of papers or everything like that, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. But for a student, you're primarily trying to share what others have done before you, and that is what the review of literature is for. And again, without repeating myself, the methodology, you lay out how you are going to answer your research question. This is very, very critical. And so once all this is done, you go out and you get some data, you analyze it according to the research question that you ask, and now you have a bunch of numbers and you gotta figure out how to share this, how to present this to your audience, whether it's you know in a presentation or for our purposes in writing for a thesis, dissertation, or an academic article. So that's what we're gonna be looking at here. Now generally, what I found that works uh, the best in the past is you answer your questions in your results section in the order that you presented the questions in your review of literature introduction. So whatever was question one, you answer that first. Whatever was question two, you answer that second, etc. This helps to maintain continuity in your paper. So the example I like to give students is, is that you know if you're at a party and you bring some friends along and you introduce your friends in a certain order, A, B, C, when, if you talk about them again, you're going to talk about person A first because that was the first person you introduced. It makes uh, sense to the audience who is meeting these friends for the first time. And so it's not wrong to answer these questions out of order per se, but it's just a little bit easier for the reader because they're anticipating a certain order, a certain structure, and it's better you stick to that. If you want to change the order in which you answer your questions in your results section, just go back into your introduction, your review of literature, and change the order that you present the questions. Again, I can't prove that this is something you have to do, but this is something I've learned through experience. Now, this slide is also important. And so remember, there are three types of research questions in social science, quantitative social science. You got descriptive, you got comparison, and you got relationship type questions. And so generally what I do is, and again, I'm working with several variables here. You can see I got a variable A, a variable B, a variable C. I deal with question one, all three variables first. So I deal all the descriptive stuff first. I go paragraph by paragraph from one variable to the next. I do all my descriptive stuff first. Once I've completed all of the different answers to research question one, because each question can have multiple answers if you have multiple variables you are exploring and investigating. So that is why I deal with all of my variables for question one first. When I've done that, I then will move on to my question two, which is when you're comparing you know, through groups. So t-test, all NOVA type results. I'll go step by step. Everything I learned for variable one combined with whatever categorical variable. Then everything for variable number two or variable B combined with this categorical variable, et cetera. I'll do that step by step. <clears throat> and lastly, 
for question number three, a relationship question, often there's only one answer because you're kind of putting all your variables together, like in a regression model, or you're putting all your variables together to try to answer like correlations or whatever. Again, the statistical aspects of this is beyond the video, but there's often generally only one or, or two answers for a question three. So I kind of combine everything together and this will make more sense when I show you an example. So that's kind of how I do it. Now, is this the only way to do it? Of course not. Some people like to go like this. They answer across. So they deal with variable A or their first variable and they deal all of this stuff for variable A. Then they go back and they repeat this process for variable B. It doesn't really matter. What matters really is that it is clear in your mind how you're going to do this and that you're not confused. One reason people struggle with how they want to present their results section is they have no idea how they can do it. So I'm sharing with you more of a, uh, I guess you can call it a, a vertical approach where you deal with each question and you give all the answers for each question first but you can also deal with things horizontally where you present all the findings for a variable and then move to the next variable. Either approach is acceptable, but remember the key to writing is to know your audience, <clears throat> to know the expectation for your teacher advisor, if you're a student or to know the expectations for the journal you're sharing with. Both of these are fine, but some people prefer one over the other. So here's an example of how you can go about trying to express your results in writing for an audience. And again, it'd be really boring to actually read this out to you, but this is kind of how we do it. So um, you share your variable right here in relation to your variable. This is cell phone addiction in my example. The participants, this is the students. Of oh, this study indicated that they, you give a general interpretation, disagreed mildly with the statements of the survey. And then I share all the, the statistical stuff here. Again, unfortunately, I'm kind of assuming you know what this is um, because this video is not about statistics. So for t-tests, you can see here, I got my analysis tool right here. And then I go and I talk about how I'm looking for, for gender. This is my variable uh, classroom learning environment. So there's no differences in gender. And these are the results of the t-tests right here. You can see ANOVA the same idea, but here are the results for ANOVA. Remember, all know is when you have multiple groups in your categorical variable, more than two. For correlation, you can see here I have cell phone addiction and academic stress. Those are the two variables I'm looking at. And I give you the interpretation of the strength of the relationship. And then here are all of the results for the correlation. So correlation was 0.37, then the sample size, the significance, etc. Again, the statistics is something you should be familiar with or you should look for other videos. And so you can see how things are structured in terms of how you can actually present these things. And then at the bottom here, we have our multiple regression. And so a uh, multiple regression was conducted to explain motivation. So I'm telling you what the outcome variable is motivation to study. This is my outcome variable. And then I start to list all of my different, uh, independent variables. So institutional support right here, social support, academic self-efficacy. So uh, also I got classroom learning environment. I forgot that guy right here. And then these are the results right here for each one of those, the beta. And of course, I'm assuming you know what this stuff is. And then also the overall model is right here at the bottom in terms of the significance and the overall R square. So this is one way to do it. Now, there's something else that I need to share. You can share your results here in writing like this, or you can also, of course, make tables. Now, which one is better? Tables. It really depends on how much space you have. So if you're writing a dissertation or thesis, you got lots and lots of space to make tables and to write out results. If you're writing for an academic journal and let's say the word limit is 5,000 words or maybe even 3,000 words, um, or there's, <clears throat> you, you might want to, again, do tables. However, if there's a page limit, like let, let's say the journal says, you know, 15 pages, double space, period, including references. Tables take up a lot of space. So in that situation, it might not be appropriate to share your results in tables because of the amount of real estate they take up. You might want to share it in text only. Now, you also have to think about your audience. If you're dealing with mathematical, technical people, you could just write it in the paragraph and they'll probably be okay. 
Um, if you're dealing with people who, again, we're not, we're not going to question their intelligence, but they're just not as inclined towards the math. They might prefer tables because they get kind of lost in looking at the numbers in isolation like that. So you have to think about that as well. So there's lots of different factors in trying to determine how you want to share your results. These are things you have to keep in mind. How much space do I have? Is there a word limit? Is there a page limit? Who am I writing for? Are these people who love numbers? They might not care. If they're not as strong with numbers or they just have a dislike for numbers a little bit, they might prefer a table. Some people want tables, some people don't. It really depends, there's no rule. What's more important is to be aware of your options and you adjust your writing style to satisfy who you're writing for. All right, let's take a look at an example. All right, so here's an example that I wrote up a few years ago. Here's the results section right here. And so you can see that the style right here. So I'm starting with academic dishonesty and notice what I'm doing here. This first paragraph is academic dishonesty. The second paragraph is dealing with e-learning readiness. And the third paragraph here is dealing with procedural justice. These are all of the different variables in my study. And so with each one of these, I just share the results. I say here, if you look at the first paragraph, students indicated that they disagree. That's the interpretation with actions that demonstrate the practice of duplicitous scholarly behavior. This is a fancy way of saying academic dishonesty right here. And so then I share the results right here, the mean standard deviation and 95% confidence interval. And I give some examples from the actual survey here, statements that they responded to. That's what I do right here. And then I repeat this process for e-learning readiness, same steps, excuse me, and for procedural justice. Now here, I actually put in a, a table because I have the space to do that. And these are the things that I talked about in the paragraph. So they're kind of supporting each other because some people, they like the, the numbers in the paragraph, some people don't. And then also I have another table here that shares the correlations and the standard deviation and means of the overall variables, not just individual items. All right. And so right here, I start going through the, let's see here. Uh, I start going through the um, regression analysis. So there was like no t-test in this particular uh, paper. And so I start to share, um, let's see here, right here. Some, oh, there was a t-test result. T-test results right here for the different um, groups. And then I have my, oh, this is student t, excuse me. No, this is the beta results, excuse me. I should have regression results here. All right, and then I share the regression results for other ones down at the bottom. And then here's the actual regression table. So you can see how I'm going step by step through all of my research questions. And again, we don't have time in this video to talk about how to perform the statistical analysis. This is something you should already know or you should be exploring on your own. And so here are some of the group means. So like for example, for a t-test or whatever. <clears throat> Uh, right here. And so that's kind of how you can go about doing this. This is not the only way, but this is the way that was done here. Okay. So yeah, I think that's all that I wanted to share on this. So I didn't do like all over a t-test results in this particular paper, but you get the basic idea about how you go about, you answer question one, you answer question two, and then you move on. So for me, I had two questions here and that was the important thing to understand. So what we need to do now is try to wrap this up. Now, in this video, we looked at how to go about developing and shaping the results section of your paper. This is also called the finding section in some places. And so what you do is, is that you go about by answering your questions in the order that you've presented them in your introduction slash review of literature. That's the first thing I recommend that you do. And then when it's time to share things, you have two approaches. The one that I recommend is that you, you give all the answers to your first research question, which is normally descriptive in nature. So for every variable, you just share the results. We looked at examples of how to write that up. You have to also keep in mind, do I want tables or not? It depends on the context, who's gonna read your paper, how much space do you have? 
Another way that you can go about sharing your results is to think about it, not vertically, but horizontally, like share everything for the first variable, share everything for the second variable. Again, you must keep in mind who is going to read my paper. What are the expectations of my teacher? Because there's not one single way. You need to know what tools are available for you as you approach this, but there's not one single way to share your results. And there might be other ways that this can be done that even I'm not familiar with. Let's be honest. Now, after you do that, like I already said, you have to think about, you know, your space, who you're writing for, etc. And then we also looked at some examples. And so in the example, we started with the table that I shared where I gave you a basic general way that you can go about approaching writing up the responses. But then in the actual article that we looked at, we looked at how to answer descriptive questions. Um, and then we looked at how to, to share results for a, uh, um, a relationship question. For comparison, it's really not that hard. You just share out the t-test results and share if there's a difference or no difference. Now keep in mind that if there is a difference, you have to indicate where it's at using a Tukey post hoc test um, to help you out for all Nova or of course if it's for t-test, it's obvious where the difference is at. Um, and so again, that's something you have to explore on your own. So I wanna thank you again for going through this video with me. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you again for watching and listening and take care.